Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about some brand new Synology. I want to talk about the DS420+. Plus. Now, a few days ago, Synology's documentation regarding some of their newer releases got leaked online. It was a, probably a diplomatic nightmare in terms of the tech industry and what, the way they like to keep their secrets. And for a company like Synology, I imagine a lot of people got very, very angry. But a lot of us that care quite a lot about data storage and network attached storage in general were jumping for joy. Let's be realistic about this. We like to know when the new hardware is coming. And the four units that were discussed in these leaks we've already made a video about it was made on the hoof made while I was at home during self-isolation and I like the video but it's quite sketchy and there's some cats running around all over the shop and I said I would make dedicated videos for each of these releases and that's what today's video is about today I want to talk about the mid-range 4 bay the DS420 plus now straight away there are arguments about this device where does it live in the product family is it a replacement for the play uh, the DS418 Play, or is it a follow-up to the DS415 Plus? Well, looking at the hardware, it seems pretty clear this is a follow-up to the Play series. Whether we're going to see the Play come back, I'm not sure. I know, for example, when the 918 and the Play came out, they were quite similar. There was a price difference of about 70 quid between them, but there's no avoiding it. The DS420 Plus is a NAS that gives you a good mid-range price for everything and has even borrowed some of the hardware potential found in the 918, giving you, I think, a better balance of hardware. But without any idea of what this device is going to cost and where it lives in the family of devices for sure, we can only at the moment speculate about how good this device can be. We know the hardware and we know what it has and what it hasn't. But the 420 Plus is a little bit of an enigma. It has the potential to be one of the most popular of the four NASs that were leaked a few days ago, simply because it gives you a good taste of everything Synology are putting out there in their newer generation, but doesn't commit you to any bigger, uh, more expensive ideal. So, what do we know about the DS420 Plus? Well, straight away, it is a dual-core NAS. It takes advantage of the J4025 processor, one of the newer generation of Gemini Lake processors, and this CPU is a 2.0 gigahertz per core CPU, with each core being burstable, or turbo, if you like, to 2.9 gigahertz. That's quite a high clock speed for a mid-range NAS. And this two-core CPU, with that CPU rated at around 1825 on CPU benchmark, it is, you know, four not considered to be their top, the highest tier of their disk station NASs, and somewhere just underneath. It's pretty impressive. That CPU, AES, NI encryption, 4K transcoding, 1080p transcoding, both of them transcoding very, very, very well natively in Synology's own apps, with Plex Media Server likely being able to transcode 1080p, but definitely not 4K. Supporting encoding and decoding of H.265, but only decoding of H.264. So this isn't quite as powerful as the 920 plus but i would argue that the ds420 might be more powerful than the 918 it's a question of cores and efficiency along with that the 420 arrives with ddr4 memory and ddr4 memory here 2400 uh, megahertz this um, the memory there arrives with two gig by default that can be upgraded to six gig which again is a weird number i've never really been a fan of Synology's utilization of six gig of memory, four and two, and mixing memory modules. I know I'm a bit mm, not sure about that. But that CPU does bring a lot to the table. It's got integrated graphics, which is always good to know, and that's UHD 600 uh, integrated HD graphics, which means things like um, surveillance and virtual machines and containers will run very well indeed. But because this is a dual core NAS, there's almost every certainty that Synology are not going to let this NAS run its own virtual machine management software. With dual core NASs, you see Synology tend to remove a few of the top, top, top tier apps, only a few, two or three, simply because they want their apps to run very, very well for all users. And a dual core NAS has never really been optimal for a virtual machine because you always have to leave some of the hardware to run the NAS and then pass some of it off to the VM. And the dual core NAS means even if you give them one core each, that's two things doing two jobs badly instead of one doing a job very well. Now, 
with this device, we are looking at a very, very similar build to that of the 918 and the 920. It's got USB 3 on the front and back. It's got um, two LAN ports there, so one GBE throughout, but two of them. So you've got link aggregation, two GBE or 200 megabits, uh, megabyte potential. And then on top of that, this one has NVMe SSD cache. That's right, something I got wrong in my previous video. The DS420 Plus does have two dedicated NVMe SSD bays, which for caching is hugely advantageous. And it allows mid-range affordable NAS buyers to now have their hands on very, very good potential internal speeds. Don't get me wrong, the CPU might be the tiniest of bottlenecks if you're going real, real high performance. And in that case, you should, again, look at a Pentium or an i3 or something. But the 420 arriving with SSD cache probably means that if they can maintain that price point of its predecessor, that 410, 420, 430 uh, um, price tag with tax that the previous generation uh, 418 Play had, then chances are this is going to do very well. It could be one of the most popular of the four, or people could look at this just like they looked at the uh, 418 Play like uh, against the 918 Plus and go, well, for 60, 70 quid, I get all of this. This time, the comparison between them is a lot smaller. The 420 is a dual core, not a quad core, and it's two gig, not four gig. But in every other regard, maybe not expandability, the 420 and the 920 are a lot more similar this time around. And I think it will leave a lot of buyers to pause slightly and think, do I need a quad core? And that's what's important here, because the idea of having SSD cache on almost all of their newer generation NAS is, no, I said almost, um, is something a lot of you have definitely found interesting. Uh, if they kind of leverage that against the lack of 2.5 GBE, which a lot of you were sort of wondering why Synology didn't go down the road of PCIe on these devices or the road of uh, 5 or 10 GBE. But that's just the way their product lines have always existed with the um, 5 and 8 bays and above with PCIe expandability. And of course, there is a 6 bay coming soon with 2.5 GBE as standard. So the 420 does arrive with a lot of hardware to bring to the table. And of course, USB 3, but no expandable ports with eSATA. What about the software? Well, because the software, uh, because the, the DS420 Plus has a very, very similar architecture to that of the 418 Play and the DS918 Plus, we can see that it's going to run pretty much everything. It's not going to run more um, CPU intensive apps again, like uh, Virtual Machine Manager, which allow, which kind of enforces you to say, I'm using this much memory and this much CPU. Apart from those, it's going to run everything else. It's going to run their entire catalog of collaboration apps, from Synology Drives to Synology Moments to Synology Office Calendar Chat, um, driver already well, mentioned that already then you've got all of those apps along with active backup suite that great um backup tool that allows you to monitor via one portal access point all of your backup devices at any given time and control them accordingly and with improvements to the cms system in the back end and improvements to the multimedia applications photo station music station video station in the front end we do see that even Synology's DSM 6.2 software with 7 just around the corner, there is a lot that can be done with the DS420+. Plus. Now, in terms of release date, we still have no idea about the release of these. All this information comes from a leak. It doesn't come from, unfortunately, any official source, that which a, you know, coming soon was attached to the side. But given the naming convention, of a number 20 on the side, it dictates that this device is probably going to arrive before the end of the summer. At the very latest, maybe August, I don't think it'll arrive much later than that, because that's just the way Synology have always dictated their release patterns. And if it was any later than that, chances are it would end in the number 21. That's obviously based on this hist historical information about the way the company works, but I think it stood up the test of time so far. Now the DS420 Plus, might be a NAS that you're interested in. Or, like well, every indication that I'm seeing both in the comments and NAS Compares on Reddit and everywhere else, it seems to me like people want to see how it fares against the 920 and if the 920 is definitely going to be a 1GBE NAS or not. But 
why don't you guys let me know what you think in the comments below tell me which one of the new four bay uh the new synology nas 2 and 4 bays you're interested in and why if you've enjoyed this video click like if you want to learn more about this NAS and the other ones that are coming very, very soon, click subscribe and do stay tuned for the comparisons between these newer generation Synologies and the newer generation QNAPs coming very soon. All great NASs, all supporting the very latest hard drives at 16 terabyte from Seagate Ironwolf, huge sizes in fours and two bays. And then on top of that, these NASs all arriving very, very soon. There's gonna be a lot of similar hardware out there. You might need a hand choosing the right one. So do let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.